parent graphs. Remember the parent Oreo, the original flavor? Okay, these are parent graphs that have no transformations yet. It is really, really important to know what these look like. These graphs occur so frequently in this course that it would be worth your time to learn slash memorize them. So that's what we will be trying to do. Um, on Tuesday, we're gonna have a Kahoot that goes over parent graphs and you also have a Desmos activity that's going to go over parent graphs. So let's just do a quick review. We have y equals x, a line, quadratic, parabola, our cubic, our quartic, square root function, our cube root function. Um, this next one we have not explored before, y equals x to the two-thirds y equals absolute value x, y equals 1 over x, and I'm not sure we've really looked into this one, y equals 1 over x squared, and x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So you have most of them just to review. Graphing adjustments to y equals f of x. What do these things mean? y equals negative f of x. When you have a negative in front, it changes the sign of your output y equals f of negative x. That's changing the sign of your input. Adding something to the function is a vertical shift. Adding or subtracting to the input of the function is a horizontal shift. When you multiply by a number, you're stretching. Vertical stretch or vertical shrink when you are multiplying the input, you have a horizontal oh. shrink or horizontal stretch. You have a shrink if b is greater than 1 and a stretch if b is less than 1. If we had 1 half times x, then you would have a horizontal stretch of 2, the reciprocal of 1 half. To make all of the outputs absolute value or positive, you reflect all points below the x-axis across the x-axis, leave the points that are above the x-axis alone. For f of absolute value x, eliminate completely all, all points left of the y-axis. Leave the points right of the y-axis alone. Then you're going to reflect all those points. So replace the left half of the graph with a reflection of the right half. Your graph should then show y-axis symmetry. So we're going to practice these graphing adjustments or transformations. The graph of f of x is shown, and we're going to use that to sketch the following transformations of f of x. I'm just going to point out some of the main points we have here. Okay, so when this value inside of here is plus 2, that means we're going to move everything to the left 2. I have negative 2, 2 is going to move to the left 2, and that's off the graph, so I don't have to graph it. So the next point is negative 1, 0. That needs to go to the left 2, negative 3, 0. 0, 2 needs to go to the left 2. And now I'm just going to kind of follow this pattern. Right, that's just a kind of a line. 1, 3. We have shifted it to the left 2 units. This one right here, negative f of x plus 2. Changing the sign of the output gives us a reflection over the x-axis, but adding 2 to the end of the function gives me a vertical shift. So we're going to go, we're going to reflect in the x-axis and then shift up 2. Go in the order they give you from left to right. Negative 2, 2. So this point was up here. I want to reflect over the x-axis. So I want it to be now here, and it's going to kind of look like that. This is just the blue part, okay? 
I've just reflected it over the x-axis, but I also need to vertically shift up to, and that's going to be the actual graph. I have to visualize it, so I don't like doing multiple transformations in my head. You can, as long as you clearly label, you can leave your old transformation here on the graph. Again, as long as you clearly label or you can erase it. Y equals one half F of negative X. First of all, we have a number being multiplied to the entire function. That would be a vertical stretch or shrink. And in this case, because it's a fraction and it's in this position, the vertical position, that would be a vertical shrink. So think of the graph as being only half as tall as the original graph. Changing the sign of your input gives us a reflection in the y-axis. The shrink is happening, the shrink is being multiplied by the reflection. So the reflection is happening first. We do have to follow um, order of operations here. So a reflection over the y-axis, the little parabola part is going to be on this side now and the line portion will be on this side. Now listen carefully for this next part. Each output, because that's what f of x means, each output is now only going to be half as much as it was before. So at negative three, the output was negative one, but what's half of negative one? Negative one half. At negative two, the output is zero. What's half of zero? Zero. Negative one goes up one, so one half of one will be one half. The output here is two, half of two is one. The output at one is zero, half of zero is zero. The output at two is two, half of two is one. And here is our little parabola in line, having been reflected over the y-axis and then vertically shrunk to half its height. Multiplying each input by a number gives you a horizontal stretch or shrink. Remember, it's the reciprocal of what this number is. We have two, then we actually have a horizontal shrink of one half. This absolute value is going to reflect only some of the points, but we'll get to that after we've done this sort of horizontal shrink. I've resketched the original. A horizontal shrink is going to not change the range, okay, or the height, but it's going to change the width or the domain of this. All x values need to be cut in half. Negative 2, 2 is a point that we have. That point will now, the x value will be cut in half. So if it was negative 2, 2, now it becomes negative 1, 2. Now, negative 1, 0 is cut in half, so negative half 0. 0, 2, 0, cut in half is just 0. 1, 1. So one half one, two zero would be one zero. Remember, we're just cutting the x in half. The x value here is three. There is our horizontal shrink, but then we have absolute value of all of the outputs. Reflect all points below the x-axis across the x-axis. So basically nothing should dip below the x-axis. Anything that dips below should be reflected to go above. And it looks like we only have one point that dips below. So that point was three, was one and a half negative one. So now it will be one and a half positive one. There is the complete transformation. F of absolute value x. Eliminate completely all points left of the y-axis. So everything to the left is just going to be erased. 
and then you look at the points that are on the right side of the y-axis and you reflect those over. Those become the new points that are to the left of the y-axis. Let me sketch that original graph. Okay, for absolute value of the input, what we do is first erase all points to the left of the y-axis, then take all the points that are to the right of the y-axis and those become the new points to the left of the y-axis. So you reflect those. And you're done.